Are boring tunnels a scam? No. But let me tell you why. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. As a reminder, uh, you know, this is the full version that goes out on Friday on the second channel, My Tesla Live. And the condensed version goes out over the weekend on the main channel, My Tesla Weekend. It's whichever version you see on the screen. Quick thanks to newest patron, Lars, and upgrading patron, Keith. Thank you guys for your choice to support the channel. Cool your heels with the building a transit tunnel at 70% off. The Boring Company is a complete bomb. Its tunnels are pathetic shadows of a real workable transit tunnel with all the safety in infrastructure required. Its tunneling speed is astronomically slower than state-of-the-art tunneling machines. Look at the time to build the pathetic few miles of the Vegas Loop. No amount of LED fairy lights can obscure the fact that the Boring Company is as big a bust as the Hyperloop. So yeah, I um, went ahead and wrote a detailed reply. So let's look at these, uh, let's look at these, these complaints. I said they are cheaper because the diameter is 70% smaller, you know, or more. They are only four inches larger than what they use in the London tubes for the London Underground. The diameter of the boring tunnel was chosen on purpose. It's not just 11 feet bigger across, it's the cross section itself that's massively bigger. The speed complaint is off base too, but yeah, the London tube, 11 foot eight versus the boring tunnel at 12 feet. To date, Elon Musk's own company has focused on building tunnels to transport passengers, although moving freight could be a thing. Why make something smaller? Why make it less safe? Also, the speed complaint is woefully off base. The tunnel in Seattle costs $3.4 billion. It's only about three miles long. Yeah, five and a half years to go two miles at a cost of over $3 billion. Vegas Loop was a pair of one-mile tunnels completed in a year and a half for $55 million. An average speed of 49 feet per day. And that was during the pandemic. That was during the lockdown. At worst, the boring tunnel in Vegas was 30 times cheaper and three times faster. And you guys may not know this, but it's already expanded to the Strip. Here it is in front of Resorts World. They're working on the station inside. This is a very cheap system. So what are the potential points of failure? You know, we've got to have all that safety stuff, right? The safety factor is misunderstood. Tunnels have a bunch of escape routes because tunnels, as they exist today, need them. They're dangerous places to be full of fumes or, in the case of subways, a third rail, which will absolutely fry you. And even if you didn't have that, when you get out of the car, where do you go? Do you go into traffic to get hit? Is traffic bi-directional? In some tunnels it is. So they either have petrol fumes from a mess of unpredictable vehicles or high voltage lines to zap you. So what are the potential points of failure in a tunnel like the Boring Tunnel? If a vehicle simply dies, there's inconvenience, but nothing catastrophic or deadly. The failure is unlikely since there's no opportunity for road debris and maintenance is easy and predictable. If one were to somehow crash into the wall or another vehicle, it's not going to result in a fire. There's no gasoline to burn and there's no exhaust. There's no third rail or overhead high voltage lines to electrocute you. And electric cars, even the Chevy Bolt, do not simply spontaneously combust. Even those go up en fuego while charging. So in short, there are no escape wells because there's no need for them. That's why the design was approved in the first place. Oh, the tunnels are a death trap. Getting a tunnel approved, getting any sort of infrastructure approved, getting any sort of transit system approved is a monumental undertaking, and I assure you, it's been considered. In the event an evacuation was needed, you get out and you walk along the tunnel. Since it's a single file tunnel, nobody's coming 
from that direction. Only traffic behind you. If someone's coming from ahead of you, that's a rescue crew. So while, you know, Tesla's presently used in the tunnels are not ideally suited for the application, they, they need to be trains. You know, what you've invented is trains, but worse. Yeah, maybe. Trains are expensive. They're very expensive. And we're not seeing the final version of the boring tunnel vehicle. We're seeing the, for now, good enough version. Tesla's already working on a robo-taxi form factor, which I believe is what will be adapted for the use in the tunnel. Something that doesn't hold three or four or five people, but, you know, 10 or 12. Like a little shuttle bus, which is, in my opinion, what it's replacing. So the boring tunnel already meets the project requirements, as is, in terms of cost and capacity. So those improvements will just further increase the benefits of the tunnel. By comparison, a current project underway, designed to expand the Los Angeles metro system by nine mi miles, costs over nine, ababa, above a billion dollars. A billion dollars a mile. That's insane. So let's look at the cross section again. Diameter of 12 feet gives you an area of 113. And now let's look you know, and here's the little guy. And by the way, they do have proposals for bigger ones that would be wide enough to hold two shipping containers on a specialized skateboard. But the Boring Tunnel is very small. Compared to Seattle's tunnel, 57 feet across. Now look at that though. Isn't that pretty? Two lanes of traffic, separated. All kinds of access and pipes and utility stuff. It's great, but it's big and it's expensive. And that's because its cross section is 2,463 feet. It's 2,000% bigger cross section. 2,000%. That's, that's outrageous. So yeah, the Resorts World Tunnel to the Convention Center is already opening. And this is going to run down the length of the Strip, the Vegas Strip, and then over to the airport. It's only about nine miles. At some point, it's expected to go all the way to the Fremont Street Experience, the Stratosphere, with stubs for Circus Circus, Resorts World we saw is already there. And then it's gonna head down and cut over. And this is not going to cost the city anything. Taxpayers are not on the hook for this. In fact, they're kind of loaning the money some of it, to cover just the main line. And all of these guys, all the hotels, are paying for their own stations at whatever cost it is. And when it begins operating, the Boring Company has to pay royalties back to Clark County to recover the costs. It's expensive for somebody, but not for the taxpayers. And really, it'll be something, uh, the longest ride, I believe, is $12 from here all the way down to the airport. It might be $12 from here all the way up to Resorts World, but that's still cheaper than a taxi, vastly quicker, and more comfortable, less stressful. You're out of the heat. If you've ever dealt with a cab driver in Vegas, I have great sympathy for you, because I've had that experience, and it was not good. It was scary and unpleasant. The guy was a lunatic. So why not just do trains? Trains already exist. They're already better. So the Boring Tunnel, the, the Vegas Loop cost about $55 million. The next closest bid was $215 million for an elevated rail system. There's no budget, man. There's no budget for that. The alternative to the Vegas Loop was not an above-ground rail system. It was no system because they didn't have $215 million laying around. Four times cheaper. Four times cheaper. And this is something, as we can see, that is now able to expand. And if for some reason they don't hit the capacity required, Boring Company has to pay, potentially, millions back. And everything they do has an eye for styling. This is what they had originally said 
the tunnels could look like. The footprint on that is very wide. It's a big chunk of window that doesn't appear to have any openings. But you get the idea. It'd be a shuttle bus, but closer to the ground. Easier egress, because there's no heavy frame supporting the whole thing. That's kind of how it is. So let's get into the Q&A. Let's talk about this, huh? What did I miss? Hmm? Quick thanks to my Patreons who get early access, bonus content, an ad-free experience, all that good stuff. Thank you guys so much for being a part of it. And thank you guys just for being here in the chat. That's cool, too. Well, there it is, and there you go. If you want to see the full, uncut, 30-ish minute version of this episode, head over to the second channel, link in the description, and subscribe over there if you want to catch these live each Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific, as well as the Fast Charging with B&B podcast, co-hosted with Bear from Bear's Workshop. So, what did I miss or misunderstand? Tell me in the comments, and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the other side. Stevie Z.